Now you can also listen to us on your favorite podcast with just a search, Faith Temple and Cog. Listen on the go with your favorite streaming platforms, like YouTube, Spotify, Audible, Apple, Amazon Music, Google, Facebook, and Anchor Podcasts. Thank you for listening to our Faith Temple, Nfkog, broadcast. If you would like more information about us, you can visit our website at www.ftnfcog.org. We are also on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Just type Faith Temple, Nfkog in the search. I got a text message from Deacon McLean that she wasn't going to be here tonight. So we'll keep her in prayer uh, and uh, hope whatever. Uh, well, I ain't going to hope it. I know she got the victory. So we're just going to claim that in our prayer. Amen. Uh, I do apologize for Sunday. I got just, just not young as I used to be. That's all I can say. <laughs> That's all I can say. I can't. Just not as young as I used to be. Amen. Yeah, can't do what I used to do. Amen. All right. Amen. We're going to ask Elder Wright, you want to open us in prayer? Yes, sir, I can. Okay. Father in heaven, we thank you for one more time that we got together, Father. We thank you for what you're going to, you are doing in our lives, Father. Right now, God, we lift up Dick and Tracy, God. You know all about this situation, Father, so we just lift it up, lift it up and give it to you, Father. Your will be done, Father. We thank you right now, God. We glorify you. We honor you, oh God, for you working it out, Father. We ask right now, everyone under the sound of my voice, Father, that you have your way in our lives, oh God. Stir us up stronger, oh Father, in your will, God. We ask you to touch this lesson. Just to teach your father in the name of Jesus, God, that we have our eyes and our ears and our hearts to understand, God, what you want us to do, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> we uh, left off uh, last week uh, under the the power of prayer. And uh, when I, I was trying to do that to finish, to stay within an hour's time limit, but I seen in my notes that I left some things off about the power of prayer. So uh, I want to just go back over that uh, refresher of the power. One thing that is, we know the power of prayer, but what is the driving force in the power of prayer? Anybody would take an educated guess? I would guess that the point is that we are able to put ourselves in agreement with God's will and pray that uh, his will will be done on the earth. So that's the power I believe. Mm -hmm. What's that? What did you say, Mom? I said the driving force. You say the What's the power? The power, the driving force. The power of prayer, yes. The power behind prayer. Mother Smith said that she believed in coming in agreement with God. You mean why we pray? You no, know, the power. The power. The power. Well, let me get to all that. It's not in your textbooks. <laughs> so I know you're digging in your textbook looking for it. <laughs> but it's, it's not in your textbook. There's something God gave me. And I just put my notes there when I was reading the, during the study of the power of prayer and i came to this thing the holy spirit gave it to me faith and what mother said uh, getting in agreement with god but faith is the power of prayer um faith is what makes the prayer come to fruition uh and and and, and I, I came up with that when when you read in james i'm gonna read this uh if y'all get james the first chapter <clears throat> And I'm gonna read the one uh solid verse five B, I guess I'm gonna say. Uh I'll read the whole five. I ain't in no rush. If any man, James the first chapter, verse five, if any man, any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and abradeth not, 
and it shall be given unto him. Then he got a word in verse 6 says, but, but let him ask in faith. And that's where your driving force is, uh, the power is your, your faith. And it says, let him ask in faith, not wavering. And uh, that's where we get into the, the thing of the power of prayer. Because all of us pray, and all of us can say we ask God, and God is not asking our prayer. It doesn't seem like God asks prayer. But faith moves God. And and, and you got to believe that what you ask God is going to come to pass. It's, 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 it's done. It's already done. Uh, James said here, not wavering. What is wavering? Uh, I, I'm not, you don't make actions that, oh, God ain't going to do that. That's one way of wavering after you to ask something. But another way that we do it unconsciously is we go on and uh, say you ask God for uh, healing. All right. And then you go on and, 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 and say, well, God, I don't feel no difference in me. Everything must not be God's will. And you don't know you don't heard people say it must be not God's will for me to be healed. And we go on and take actions, not stand true to the word of God, that God, I got to believe that God is going to do what I ask him. Because he said, whatever I ask and believe it and, and have faith that, it shall come to pass, saints. And what we have to do, we got to stand on the word. Let's look at uh, 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 in uh, Matthew, the, the 17th chapter, verse 21. Well, let me finish James, James here first. And it says, but let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he, this would what, this what really got me. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So that means if you doubt God and waver in any kind of way, don't think you're going to receive it. God plainly says, if you don't believe it, then you're not going to receive it. It's, it's, don't even think about you're going to receive it. So that's why we got to understand faith is the, the power of our prayer what we believe pushes that power put the power in prayer and know that it's going to it's going to come to fruition isaiah elijah said what i'm going to pray fervently that it does not rain and, and over there we read in james he prayed fervently that it went he and it says he was a lack man of our just like us passions like us but he asked god to not let it rain and it didn't rain for three and a half years. He believed that prayer. And that pushed God to the point where God had to honor his prayer. We got to believe what we ask God for. Not wavering. That's that's the key word I think the, the, the saints uh, we mess up on. Wavering. Because uh, uh, it's all degrees of wavering. In, in, your, in your mind, subconsciously, you can pray, but you're saying to yourself, oh, that ain't going to happen. I'm going to pray and ask God, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Huh? I don't know. I, that's wavering. If you're asking God for something and there's a doubt in your mind, you're wavering. And God is saying, "Don't if, you, if you're wavering, if you had that kind of frame of mind, you're not going to get anything from me. Somebody want to say something? I see some hands moving. Do you want to say something, Mother? Smith. I just want to say when you, that is a hard thing for for man to do is pray and not wait, not have a doubt in their mind that whether your prayer is going to be answered or not. It's 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 like you're praying, but like you said, in in your mind you still have that doubt whether God going to answer it or not. And that's go ahead. go ahead, mother. I understand what mother is saying that we all deal with that temptation to not believe God, but I again I go back to who God is, and I know He's faithful, who promised, and He does not lie. So it's up to me to and all of us to 
believe his word. That's what he said. He said it will not return unto him boy. But when you were talking about the different ways that we can waver, what the Holy Spirit has been dealing with me about is I tend to want to fix things. And I, I put a lot of that on what I've done for a living for much of my life, being a problem solver, trying to fix stuff. And the Lord is showing me I need to believe him. If there's something for me to do, do it. But if not, there's nothing too hard for God. So my task is to trust God. And it's something we have to, for lack of a better way to put it, work on it. <laughs> you know, exercise that faith. Believe God. Because it doesn't come naturally. I think what Mother's saying is human beings. But faith comes from God. Faith is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So that is what we have to recognize. It's not my faith. But I have to receive the faith God has given me and then walk in it. So all of us are kind of learning. Sometimes I feel like a toddler just kind of learning to walk in so many different ways. And, and, and that's why it's a, it's a we, we call progressive sanctification because as you grow closer to God and recognize who God is, the scripture says, have faith in God. So if you're having faith in God, and know who God is, then there is, should be no doubt. What did uh, I think? So, I don't know who said it, but said God is uh, slow to answer somebody. He's always on time. He doesn't uh, uh, act answer right now, but he's never late or he something like that. Always, what, what yeah, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Yeah, That's there you go. Right. That's right. He, yeah, he okay. So in our mind, because we're dealing with time in our mind god dealing with eternity in our mind god ain't moving where god is trust me if you know who i am i'm god and i and i stick it in the scripture says have faith in god not in what you can do not in what your neighbor can do but it says have faith in god when you have faith in god that pushes that power behind the prayer. Oh, it's done. I, I and you sit back, and and and, it's, and I'm not saying I do this. You, I'm just like everybody else said. Just like Mother said, we have a tendency. I got to put my hands on it. I, I got, I got, I got to, got to get this. I, I, and that's where you go. You wavering with God because you're not saying I know you're the Almighty God, but maybe I need to do this to do that. And that's when you start saying you're wavering and not trusting God. Amen. So again, yes. Go ahead, Vicky. I think I understand what Mother Emma spoke about saying. Because I think that's just trying, you know, ask God to do something. It's like, okay, God. Uh, it's like when I ask, it's like I want it now. You know, like I ask God, you know, do something with the kids, whatever. And then I don't see it. Like right away, I'm like, okay, I'm going to ask, what is going to happen? You know, and I, I'm, I'm like, I'm praying. I'm praying, I don't see it. So it's like I gotta it's like I won't be able to put my dad put put my hands in it to help him to help. Then that's when you mess everything up. <laughs> Slow it down. Yeah. So in my notes that's why I'm saying we gotta believe who God is and that pushes your power, your faith. And we how do we hear get faith? You already know by hearing the word of God. And and if you hear the word of God, you gotta believe what God's word say. I'm gonna read the scripture over here in uh, uh, Matthew. The, uh, everybody can hear me, right? Yeah, yes, sir. I, I just wanted uh, to um, go ahead. Uh, jump in right quick. Um, I was thinking um, what Mother Smith was saying and all of that. We are a time conscious people. Mm -hmm. And you said something a couple of years ago that. When God says something in our lives, we need to put it back on God. While well, I'm paraphrasing it, put it back on God because God is the only one that can do it. When God said that He's going to heal, if God said that He's going to heal us, the first thing we want to go, where am I healing that? You put it back on God because God is not a liar. His work going to perform. He's going to do what He says He's going to do. Our issue is because we are so time um, oriented people that we tried to do it on our own. That what happened with Abraham, when God told him that, you know, you're gonna have some, um, a family, you know, Sarah don't gotta say, oh, you go with this person and have kids that way. 
not waiting on God. And I have learned in my walk, especially from the transition up here, that all I had to is just in trust in God. Because I I tell people quickly, I couldn't plan my life out if you gave me a million dollars and told me to write my story. I couldn't plan that this is what I would be. And I've learned in the sense to trust in God. And I was thinking this week when I, I think I went down to Norfolk earlier this week, well, Saturday and stuff. And when I saw some of the gas prices, the enemy in the back of my mind wanted me to complain. But I stopped and I told God, thank you. For one reason, I remember there was a time when if that would have happened, I wouldn't have had and I wouldn't be able to pay it. But God, you have blessed me and put me in a position now that I, even though the gas prices are a certain amount, I could still fill my tank up. That's right. So I took that from where everybody else around the world is complaining about gas prices. I'm giving God the praise that I'm able to do it. I know that sounds crazy, but that's where my mindset is right now. Yes. It, to, to do it because God has blessed me in that to be able to do that. But that came from learning to trust God, learning to depend on God in my life and learning to, hey, God, I don't know what's going on, but you know what's going on. And you say you're going to supply all my needs. So I got to depend on you. Mm-hmm. And so that's how I am in the sense of, of my growth. I'm not saying that I'm, I'm there. I don't want nobody to think I'm, I'm there all the way there. I'm just saying for what I have learned in my lifetime, that I'd rather praise God in the midst of trouble than complain because that complaining is not going to get me anywhere. Except for, you know, farther down the road than what I should be at. So I'm learning that, you know, God, you have me at my back, even though I might don't know what's going on and I have to trust you and I have to put it back on you because it's your word. A question, question for y'all. Is murmuring and complaining a form of wavering? Yes. <laughs> yes. So, so when we murmur and complain, that should be the first thing to key us. Oh, we're not walking by faith. We murmur and complain about everything. Who's in control of everything? God. Who who make who <laughs> who do we go to to cause change? God. And and and, and what we gotta do understand about God, the what the scripture says, don't murmur and complain. You can't fix it, but you can go to the one who can fix it. If you murmur complaining, then 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 you you obviously don't believe that God can fix it. Amen. And the only way that Mother Mother Nan just asked the question, how do you get past that? Well, how do you get past that is believing in God. Trusting God knows how to fix that situation on his time. And that's where the, the 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 wavering comes in. That's when we gotta go. Oh, oh, oh! No, 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 no! This is trusting God. That's the only thing we can do is trust God. Trust God, and I want to say, I'm sorry, I didn't want to. Um, go ahead. But that's just to jump on that. Trusting in God is sometimes some trials and tribulations have to come to get you to that point. Yes. And then like, if if it was easy. I would say, Mother, all you got to do is pray and not that. That's what we need to do. But some trials and tribulations come to get you to that point. Because if it wasn't for the trials and tribulations to get to that point, we would be laid back, relaxing. You know, God, you know, God going to do it in a way. I don't need to seek him. I don't need to pray for him, God, because I'm I'm chosen. I'm a royal priesthood, so God got me covered in a way. And we got to understand that some trials and tribulations in our lives have to come to get us where we are. If, if it wasn't for Joseph going to all, going through all of that he went through, he would have never been where Pharaoh was at. So there's some things that we have to go through to get to that place. And I'm going to leave that alone. No, you all right. Yeah, I'm blessed by what you're saying, Eldon. I thought about that song. I, if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know God could solve them. And I, I agree with Elder that it's, sometimes it takes situations for us to see that we can believe God, but a lot of times it's when we have to believe him. <laughs> you know, when you reach a point that you realize, I've done all I can do and I can't. You know, people will say, 
But I've yeah. done all I can do. I guess all we can do is pray. No, we're supposed to be praying first. There you go, mother. There you go. <laughs> we prayer is supposed to be the first thing you did, not the last thing. Amen. Amen. It, it, it's it's so true what we do. We have, we we read them about the power of prayer, but we got to understand our faith is in God. And as the elder said, and that's why James said, "My brethren." Count it all joy because this is what's going to build your faith. It's going to take patience. What does it say? Let patience have its perfect work so that to, so it can add to your faith. I mean, Tom, you know what? It's, I'm quoting the scripture wrong. I might, might have to go to it. But it, it says, add to your faith virtue, uh, patience, and, 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 uh, ah. but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And how do you do that? By going through the fire. You, I've been tried. You learn and you trust God. He brought me out. Any aches and pains I have, I know God can deliver me because he, he proved himself to me with the stroke. So I trust him. And I say, well, God going to do it. Sure, I can run and gr grab a pill, but I'm going to give God the opportunity first and I just go ahead and trust him. I got to trust him. And the only way... That would that because I don't want to be caught up in, in what James said. That that man, if he acts in wavering, and he he's not gonna get anything from God. And see, we, we don't want to catch ourselves in that wavering, complaining, uh, do, trying to fix. Mother said, trying to fix it ourselves. Uh, going before God. God is the last person we turn to. We have to let God do His work. Uh, what did Jesus? Uh, uh, I, I want to look at. The one of the scriptures that came up is when remember Caleb, uh, God he was out there fighting with Joshua, and God had promised him something at the beginning of the fighting, and at the end of the fighting, Joshua was giving all to everybody what uh, God had promised him, and and hasn't said anything about Joshua. You know, and so then Joshua was, you know, he, we, we teased him about we, we past Paul and everything. He was uh, 85, and he was getting right up there in age. But he still got ahead and said anything to Joshua. And Joshua came up and said, hey, give me my mountain. You know, he, he had trusted God through all the battles, all the battles. And now he's saying, God, I just want to give him my mountain. I know the enemy's up there, but with your power, having my power, my faith in you, God, I'm able to go up there and run them off of the property, run them off the mountain. That see, that was a long and hardship, enduring process Caleb had to get to to get that mountain and know that God was backing him. You understand? So that's what I'm trying to get us to understand. It's a process, it just as uh, Elder Wright said, it's a process, but we got to trust God. And in, in that process, in the battle, you learn that God is fighting the battle. He got the back. He's got, you might be out there, but God is making sure nothing happens. God is taking, he got a hedge around you and making sure nothing uh, is going to happen. What, what did you do for Job? He, he kept him going, you going to go this far. Can't go no beyond that, that Satan. You're not going no further. All right? And and, and Abraham, uh, look, that city got to go. I'm going to give him a chance, but the city, Solomon and Gamal got to go. He, he we went to God. After that, he had to pour his hand. Abraham had to leave it alone. Whatever happened, it, he trusted God. We got to do the same thing. As the elder said, trials and tribulations are coming. The word of God said he is coming. Is coming, but we gotta have faith in God. And the the, the the our prayer when we pray, we gotta have, believe that God is gonna do it. And that's where the saints and the uh, the church failed and fall short and end up in disarray, end up in uh, chaos, end up in unbelief, end up in uh, uh, stressing on things and doing this and doing that. If you pray, God knows the answer, and he knows to fix it. Amen? Amen. If, <laughs> you know, I, I go ahead, Vic. Um, this is just me. 
Like when I pray, you know, ask God to do this and do that or whatever, ask God for. When I pray again, you know, I don't ask for the same thing over and over again. I just go and tell thank him for what I asked him for the first time. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to pray now, but I do it. That's why I do God, well, I thank you for this because that's what I asked you for. And although I haven't seen it manifest, but I still thank you for it. Go ahead, Mother. You want to say something about you? Yes, I was thinking how um, when you were talking about Joshua and Caleb, the Lord had done so much for the children of Israel, so many miracles, and there were instances where he told them, the Lord told them to put down things so they would remember. And I remember at Faith Temple, we had some bricks there for that very reason. Right. We need to remember what God's already done in their lives. You know, people will say, what have you done for me lately? It shouldn't be like that. With no. God. He has worked miracle after miracle all through my life. There's a song I love. It said, all of my days, you've been good to me. And he has been. So I don't need to get to this point then and start doubting him when he's brought me through this year after year after year. And I can give examples, but I won't, of situations that he has stepped in. And it wasn't always exactly when I thought it ought to happen. But he sees the master plan. I, I was thinking about how, I, again, my mind goes back to children. You want things before time because you don't understand the plan, the big plan. You know, I could be an eight-year-old wanting to drive, but eight-year-olds don't drive cars. <laughs> <laughs> and God's up in heaven knowing the total picture. And we're down here wanting to dictate saying, well, God, do this quickly now. I want this done. <laughs> I don't know how he puts up with us. I tell you, too. But... Again, my point is, think about what God has already done. That encourages my heart and lets me know he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And it is a learning process, as Elder was saying. What he's gone through in the transition from Norfolk to Warsaw taught him some things. And all of us could give examples of how he's brought us through. But just don't have short-term memory issues when it comes to God. Right. That's right. And 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 <laughs> that when Elder, you know, he brings it up that he, he moved out on this. God got special anointing on people that will walk blindly and and go. So as Elder Wright is, is walking this way, uh, nobody else could do that the way God will have anointed his life. So whatever, just <laughs> it it just takes a special person to say, leave here. Here and go here, stay in the car, drive three hours, sleep, don't have an apartment, got to give it all up. Gotta, that's a special anointing, and you got to trust, and then you, that's right, no car. Then you got to trust God. See, see what I'm saying? Everybody can't do that, Elder, right? But because the God got a special anointing on your life, and you're walking by faith, you're going to encourage and, and be an example for others that can't walk in your shoes. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, but anyway, I don't know. Yeah. I, I can, can, can I piggyback on that? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I don't want, well, I know y'all know, but some people in my family thought it was so easy for me. <laughs> and I'm, and they, and, and they even said, and they think I got millions of dollars and all of that. And they look in and I'm, and I tell them, you have no clue because this is not what I wanted to do. This is what God placed in me to do because that was not my mindset. And I, I tell people a story of how I lost my apartment and had to move in with my sister. I was praying to God so badly. And this is this, this when we found that we praying out of all of ourselves that I didn't want to lose this apartment. God, you're going to keep me in this apartment. And I hung a picture back up. On, I took everything down. I hung one picture back up. It was a picture of a baptism and all that in my house. And I went to do some stuff in the trash and I heard it fall and crash. And the Holy Spirit told me, didn't I tell you to move? So it, I had a struggle in myself with that because I, I, I can't tell you, this, this was not easy for me, but I had to give up on myself and, and don't take that out of context, but I had to give up so I can trust God. Oh, yeah. So he can let, so I can ride this train 
Mm -hmm. You know, and just sit down and relax yeah. in, in my life. Yeah, you have to surrender. Yeah. Yes. And God it, honors obedience. You know, he said, without faith, it's impossible to please him. So when we don't trust God, it's offensive to God because he has never failed any of us. Right. And never will. And 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 it was, as I was talking, uh, as we go and grow closer to God, it's an unbelievable story when people are hearing coming. And 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 as Elder Wright was talking, I said, God will make you look good. God will make you look rich. God will have you. Sh that's what. Well, uh, that's the kind of God we serve. what what did uh, Pastor Paul always tell you? Your blessings will overtake you. And, and that's what we, people see our blessings overtaking us. They be like, man, he he got it going on. She got it going on. That's because our blessings are overtaking us, and they see the blessings, but they don't know the story behind the blessing. And that's why we got to live that and tell them, oh, God got me here. God gave me this. God provides for me. And we got to walk by faith. And that strengthens what? Our faith. It puts power in our prayer. Because then we know that we know that we know that we know that it's going to come to pass. Amen. Amen. Uh, anybody else? Before I, I want to jump jump back over here to James. And then James down here bottom in the bottom part says a double-minded man. I, let me get the scripture. But for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of, God, of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man. I'm not double-minded in the Word of God, but I'm trying to make a decision over here, and I wish he watched it. Am I double-minded? Yeah, I'm, I might, I might go here, but a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Y'all hear what I'm saying? If you double-minded, go here one day. Go here, not, not even relating to the word of God now. I'm talking about in your natural life. Uh, I go I go with this. It sounds good today. And I go that way. And I go this way. It sounds good. It says, in all your ways, if you're double-minded, in all your ways, you're unstable. And we got to be stable. We got to have our foot rooted in this word of God. Nothing should make us, uh, because it says what? acknowledge him in all your ways and he shall direct your paths so we to eliminate the double mindedness or the double actions one minute here and one minute there uh, you got to acknowledge him he let him direct your way and that eliminates you looking double minded that eliminates you looking confused that eliminates you going here and and then uh, backing up and going over here let him acknowledge your ways, trusting in him, he acknowledge and he will direct your path. And so we got to get eliminate the double mindedness, eliminate the uh, 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 asking and wavering. We got to trust God. If God, how, what did the the potter say to the, the what Jesus gave him his answer? Can the creation tell the Creator what he should do? No. No, the, the potter has a vision and has a purpose for what he's making. God had a purpose and a vision for what he created in each and every last one of us. That's why none of us look the same. That's why none of us act the same. We have a purpose, a divine calling by God to do a certain work for God in building his kingdom. And uh, Elder Wright got an anointing to move up here. I had to move to Warsaw. He brought Elder Wright a different way than he brought me. He brought Mother Smith to Warsaw in a different way than he brought anybody else. And Vicky and my mom. Each one, even Dickie McLean. Each one of us can tell a story how God got us in Warsaw, Virginia to, to work. It was a journey. I wasn't prepared in 2000, uh, when I got 2000, I mean, I mean 1994, when I got back to the United States to come to Warsaw. 
it took from 94 to 2013 13 to get me to Warsaw prepared to have a mindset to trust God that's a long time but the whole time I'm praying Lord I want to do your will oh, Lord, Lord let's show me what you want me to do so the process he's starting the process boom 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 why am I retiring in Virginia Lord I'm, I'm praying why am I trying to boom boom he's not telling me nothing. I gotta walk this walk I gotta trust him do what he's telling me here and to get me all the way to Warsaw where I can be able to be taught how amen to be a real pastor I hope y'all look back and reflect on your lives how God had moved in your life to cause you to do certain things that you have been praying for and God all the time is building you up to be the man and woman he called you to be but it's the process yeah. and we know that it's a process doesn't he say I got good thoughts concerning you yeah. and not evil to get to you to inspect it in that's it the inspecting in for me is heaven eternal life <laughs> uh, amen uh, what's that mom John, the last scripture I got is John, the 14th chapter, verse 13 to 14. Elder, do you want to read it and expound on it for us? I, I like the way you, you expound on things. <laughs> uh, Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that I, I'm, I'm sorry, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Hmm. First of all, we got to break that down a little bit deep because it said, whatsoever right. ye shall ask in my name. We just can't ask anything. <laughs> we got to know his will. All right. And only how we know his will, we got to lay before him, we got to be in his word. So once we are in his will and everything that's lined up in that, then we can ask um, in his name. 
That's okay. almost like that's almost like um, somebody who have power of authority, uh, of authority, you know, because I'm lined up with that person, I'm rep in represent representation of that person. That's what Jesus was saying. That now I can ask in His name. Then He said, "That will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son." So we also understanding that Jesus, He only do the will of the Father because that's what he came to do. And our job is to do the same thing. So we are in Christ. And so if we are all lined up in unison, then it will, it will get done. But if we are not in unison with that, we not we shouldn't expect for it to be done. In that, be glorified the Son. If he shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And that's going back to what I said earlier, that if we are, properly aligned in God's will and what he wants for our lives, then all we are doing is, hmm, he just gave me the scripture, um, whatever said we bound on earth is loosed in heaven, whatever we be loosed on earth, so it, he just gave me that, to line up with this. When we are in line with what God wants, then we have that power and authority to ask in Jesus, and it's going to be done because we are in alignment with what God already has planned for us to do. Amen. I hope that's what you hope that was you No, you, you're all right, Elder. You're all right. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I wanted to get to the point where the faith and trust, and what Mother said at the beginning, when you trust God's word, and, 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 and Caleb, the, uh, the last in Joshua, the 14th chapter, verse 12, the last uh, few words that I'm just going to say, what Caleb said, as the Lord said, he didn't say, I want this, he said, as the Lord said, so I'm trying to see, yeah, as God's word said in our lives, as we read this word, as God's word said, God's word said this. God, I'm just telling you, I'm just reminding you, Joshua, what God's word said. You understand? So as we read that Elder read that Jesus said, whatsoever you ask in my name, I said this because the Father, I want the Father to be glorified, not Jesus. The Father to be glorified and it's going to be done. It shall be done. Remember now, you trusting in the Almighty God. He's the one that said this. What we got from Genesis to Revelations. He said this. Is it going to come to pass? Everything going to come to pass. Is, is the end time, we're going to have trouble times in these last days? Yes. But as Elder Wright said, we go, the price of gas can go up to $20 an hour. I'm trusting God. Where the food gonna come from? God. What did David tell us? The word of God said David was young and now he's old, but he never seen what? The righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Can you trust that? Or do you gotta go, man? <laughs> what are we gonna do? No, trust in God. That's where the, the faith comes in, the power of your faith. Because you got to believe God is God. He is the creator of all things. And when we pray, and when we pray, we got to trust and have faith in God that it's going to be done according to what? His word. That's all I have. That's all you have. If his word said it, then you got to believe it. And trust that he's going to bring it to pass. But remember in your mind, no wavering. No double mindedness. I gotta trust God. No murmuring and complaining. I gotta trust God. I gotta trust God. Oh, I gotta do this. Oh, no, no, I gotta. Who gonna give me my strength? God. How am I gonna make it? God. Who gonna supply my needs? God. Who's gonna? Who answers my prayer? God. Who knows what's gonna happen tomorrow? God. Hallelujah. So I gotta trust in Him. In our prayer, we're talking about the power of prayer. Faith gives us that power to know that it's going to be done, saints. And we got to have our faith in God, anchored in God. 
can't be wavering like James said. Over here a minute, double-minded here a minute. Uh, I got to go forward. I got to go with trusting in what the Word of God said. And that's what uh, we were talking about in John, the the, uh, the 14th chapter, verse 13. That's what Jesus was trying to, y'all kind of, you, with, things are happening because what? God's being glorified. When Elder Wright walked up here, got in his car and said, I'm here. And, all, and God got glorified. He moved on me. Everything the devil was telling him, it ain't going to come to pass, man. You just, man, you messing up. You just really messing up, man. And hit all of that all the time. That's my son. Look at him. And he going forward. He trusted God. Each and every one of us got instances in our lives where we have trusted God. And Mother Smith made a point, strong point. Get rid of this short-term memory. How did you get here? Trusting God. <laughs> well, how are you going to go forward? Trusting God. Let me remember what it says. The song says, when I think of the goodness, when I think back over my life, when I go there, when you start thinking about what to happen in your life and how these things have happened, you start praising God. And you brings it back where you, I can't go for God. God got this. The devil can't stop my God. Matter of fact, I'm already an overcomer. And because Jesus is overcomer, I'm overcomer. I got the victory because he got the victory. Amen. I I, I, I don't want y'all to, I'm trying to get you with your faith because you, we pray a miss a lot. And that's what James talked about in, in, in the first chapter. Don't pray a miss. You, you got to, you got to be praying and believing and having faith in God that he's going to bring your prayer to pass. God works only in eternity. We work in 24 hours a day. We got to stop the thinking. Like that. God knows when to bring the past, and he knows what we need and when we need it. Amen? He'll cause things to line up and fall into place where you didn't even think it was going to be. There's no way possible. There's no way possible this can happen. But God already got things lined up. When you get to that point, it's like put, putting a key in. The tumblers drop. As you turn that key, this one might drop, that one might drop. As you turn it to open that door, those tumblers had to drop in a sequence. If the wrong key is in there, it ain't going to drop. You understand? So as you're going forward in God and he ordering your steps and you're seeking his will, God hears your prayer. God said, that's in my word. I told you that. And you can trust that word. That's what we have to line up with this word. Do everybody have an idea? What the, is everybody going to try to tell you it looks stupid? Or, or man, that don't, that don't even sound right. No. Come on now. Why was the, the uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the, 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 why did God had to put Jonah in the fish, in the belly of the fish? Why Jonah had to go all that? Why God had to do all that? And he knew he was going to uh, get the people. He wasn't going to destroy them in the first place. And they were going to turn it And God was going to forgive them. Why? Why, all, why did it? Because God is God. He's sovereign. He's sovereign. You know what? I was going to say, some people need to see. But some people need to see. It, but the Jonah had to go in the, the fish's belly. Was there a prophecy about Jesus being in the, uh, the, the the fish's belly for three days and three nights? Did we know all that was going to come to pass? No, but we had the word of God told us that Jesus was going to be just like Jonah was. Three days and three nights. Not one day, not two days. It was three days. Now, scholars have argued that you can't get no three days. Well, then maybe y'all are counting wrong. God said three days and three nights. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. But anyway, I'm going to get this under. Go ahead, Elder. I'm sorry, but it makes you think when you say that 
that we may go through some things that we don't understand, but it's for somebody else's benefit. That's right. Down the road. And we get to understand that that we go through things on purpose. Oh yeah. That I was thinking about um because I had to write this paper. Um the uh the uh, the guy that was laying for uh, thirty six some years anyway, when um they asked Jesus who sinned, was it his mother or father? He said neither, but it was for God's Perfect. glory, okay. for God's purpose. So he was that all these years just for God to manifest his glory in that particular time. So we go through things that and it don't feel good, but something we go through, we gotta realize that we go through some things just for God's glory and benefits for others. Amen. What did the scripture say? We encamp to round or encamped around us or what witnesses what they witnessing of their journey and we read about it in the word of god we read in here every step man how did he make it believe in god how did how did they, they, they just step and jump over in the fire they trusted god can we trust god that same way that's what the the the, the progressive sanctification because you got to start denying yourself. As the other writer said, I had to get out of myself to, so God could get in me to move me and show me what he had for me. Amen? So the more we get back and let, let God control us, the more peace we're having in our lives. It don't sound right because we don't know what's going to happen. But your peace is in God. That he knows what you're, what you're going through. And the journey is, like Elder Wright said, for somebody else to sit back 30 years from that. Yeah, I knew Elder Wright, yeah. Mother Smith, man, yeah. Okay, I remember that. Just like we remember things now, what Pastor Paul said. You can be out in the yard, and it just pain is clear. Oh, yeah. I was just, just, just me, just me now. I was out there cutting it with the power saw, and I heard him just simple. I heard him put them chaps on, <laughs> and, and, and I went out there and got my, <laughs> I got them chaps put on. Why? Because I had learned if I if I if if, if he had told me before it, I wouldn't have cut my leg. He gave them to me so I won't cut my leg. Now here I'm down here already then the forgot about it, but it brought it back. Go put them chaps on. You need to have them chaps. Don't work without them chaps. And so I stopped, went back, put the chaps on. It's things like that that you have to, when you get identified with the word of God, it'll come just as real as that was. The word of God said, trust in me. As Mother Nan said, she was looking for a part-time job. Hey, would you, you, you dissatisfied with how I'm taking care of you? That's what God said. <laughs> you don't like what I'm doing. <laughs> I, 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 you know, that's what we do when, when we uh, 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 complaining about this and complain. Well, I need to have this done. I need to have that done. I want to. We need. We got a leak in the roof in the house. Right? We need to put a new roof on the house. God make a way. I gotta pray. God make a way. Trust God. Amen. Everything gonna be all right. He, he's going to take care of us, saints. And we're talking about the power of prayer. Faith puts your power and know that it's going to be done. Faith in God. Know who God is. When you come to and realize that God is in control of every situation in our lives. It's already, the scripture said he knew you and me before we was in our mama's womb. Now that's, he, that, <laughs> I don't even know when I was in my mama's room. He knew me before then. Think about how awesome this God. He hid Moses in Moses' house. Had Mo the, the Pharaoh raise Moses to be the deliverer of for God. Now, now tell me he ain't awesome. It's nothing God can't do. It's nothing. <laughs> Pharaoh looking all around, where did you live at? And Moses sitting there right beside him, <laughs> eating dinner, or eating breakfast, or, or playing around there in, 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 the, in, the, in the mansion or whatever it is. That's God. That Nobody can do that but God. 
Who do we be having faith in? God. Who do we pray to? God. God would do what he said. Just as Joshua said, uh, Caleb said, told Joshua, as God said, not me, Caleb. I'm telling you, Joshua, I didn't say, I'm telling you what God said. So I'm, I'm telling you that what we just read that scripture. Jesus said this, whatsoever, if you ask anything in my name, it shall be done. He didn't say it's going to be done right then. He didn't say it's going to be done tomorrow. But it shall be done. Your job and my job is to believe what God's word says. And and stand on that word. Remember complaining? Got to go. That's causing you to waver. That's causing you to to uh, be wishy-washy. You know, you're not you're not stable. You remember and complaining. You were wavering. You're double-minded. Stop it. Just trust God. Did God send a cool breeze when uh uh uh, uh Jonah was in the thing? Did he have something come over there and feed him? He gave him a cool breeze. Yeah. So you hot during the day? God sent a breeze. I ain't gonna complain about it. it's hot out here, but just send a breeze. Let me know you right there. Huh? What's wrong with that? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that, that's God. That's that's you and your relationship with God. God, I'm out here. I need some strength. I know that I'm praying. It's like, God, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'm one man out here. Let the Holy Ghost lift this other side of this thing up. Some of the angels down here, somebody give me a hand. Does it get done? It gets done. I just praise God. I just, I just, I, you know, it's so when you get a relationship with God and as you draw closer to God, and deny yourself, the more God will step in and fill that void. He won't let you go without. He gonna fill that void that you know ain't nobody there but God. I don't care what other people might say. He, God got it. Do I look dumb to people saying of them? Yeah, I, they don't know what you're doing. I just trust God. I don't have to say nothing. I'm very quiet. I just sit there and go about my business. You know. <laughs> They, they think I'm ignoring, but I'm not ignoring. I got to. I can't get in that conversation because it causes me to doubt, and I'm trusting God for it. Amen. Amen. One thing. Here's the hard thing before we get prepared for convocation. We're closing up now. Uh, Jesus said in His Word, "These things come out through what fasting and praying." Right. That is denying ourselves. Amen. That's denying yourself. So that you could pray. Amen. Fasting means you deny yourself. You're trying to delete, get, draw back from what you're doing. And you want to lean, trust in God and pray. Amen. So, we're coming from convocation. I got a letter from, from an apostle. He wants us to fast for the convocation. He, so, I'm trying to get yourself today. You know, on Tuesday, we pray. We, we used to fast on our Bible study nights. Amen. So we're going to try to start doing our Bible study nights and get us prepared for fast three days before we go down for the convocation. We're going to fast together uh, three days before the convocation. But between now and then, start fasting on Tuesdays. Amen. So we'll be ready for Bible study. Now, if you can't do it, I understand. But just we want to draw. We want to be on one accord with God. So when we get there on th the last three days before the convocation, we want to fast and we want to pray, amen, so that we go to convocation that next day and we'll be uh, in line with the word of God and what the apostle has asked us to do. Amen. So start now on every Tuesday. Start denying yourselves. Amen. From six to whatever you get up to after Bible study. Amen. Then you go do what you want. But we got to get ourselves conditioned. And I say that I'm not saying that you got to train or condition. I'm saying you just can't jump out and and, and start. I don't want nobody to get sick. I don't want nobody to get, hey, pray. And so you got to pray and let the Holy Ghost lead you in your fast. You understand? In your God got to lead you. Pray. Let God show you how to do it on Tuesdays. Then so you can be prepared on the last three days before the convocation. Amen. Amen. I hope it's, I'm trying to
make it uh, so I want you to seek God, pray, and pray. Yes. On, on lead you how to do it, how to fast. Amen. I don't, I don't, I, not a Daniel fast. We 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 we're not doing no Daniel fast. We, <laughs> don't, I don't, we no more don't no Daniel fast. All of that. We are we gonna fast. Hey Amen. I know that it's coming. That these questions when we start popping up, <laughs> we, we fasting. Hey Amen. We gonna deny ourselves to let God fill that void so that we can be what the men and women God want us to be. Hey Amen, y'all. Hey Amen. Praise God. Hey Amen. And y'all, uh, you want to say have any words, Mother Smith? No, thank you. I, I thank the Lord. I trust him. I thank you for the word. And it's just encouraging us to trust God. I was thinking, if we don't trust God, who are we trusting? <laughs> <laughs> I can't depend on myself. So anyway, but thank you for the word. I was blessed by the message. Hey Amen. Elder Wright. No, mother summed it all up. <laughs> all right. Praise God. Glad to see Jonathan and Dominic on on had joined us uh, in our Bible study. We thank God because they didn't have to be here. Amen. We you know or neither none of y'all had to be here. So we just thank God that we God and the Holy Spirit had another session of Bible study. And uh, just continue to pray for us. Amen. 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 Mother, you want to lead us in prayer? Thank you, Father. Lord, we just bless and praise your holy name. We thank you, Father, for the encouragement through your word, Lord. And we go forth now seeking you in fasting and prayer and listening to hear your voice as we go through this life. Father, you have given us everything that pertains to life and God in this yes, Lord. Lord. To depend mm. upon you, to Hallelujah. recognize you, you're faithful. Mm. You're not a man that you could lie. You do um, not lie. And your yes. word does not return unto you, Lord. Father, help us, Lord, not to seek our own will, but to seek your will. Father, yes, as we get in line, as Elder has said repeatedly, we need to get that in our hearts. Lord, help us get in line with what your will is. As you taught the, the people to pray, thy will be done on earth as yes. it is in heaven. Father, yes, when we get like that, we mm. know it will be just what Jesus said. We ask yes. him to say, in my name, you shall have it. Because we're asking according to your will. Father, yes. go forth, Lord, doing whatever we have to do until the next time we come together. I'm asking you to bless your people. Put a hedge of protection around them. Let yes. no people come nigh them, nor nigh their dwellings. Encourage their hearts. Give them a hunger and a thirst for righteousness. Not yes. them, me, all of us. Father, for mm. you. Father, yes. it is in you that we live and move and have our being. You are the very source of yes. everything that we need, God. Bless your people. Keep them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. 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 Praise God. Amen.